Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist called Labs. We are in a series on nephrology. We talked about the creatinine clearance, and then we talked about the serum creatinine. Creatinine clearance helped us estimate the GFR, or the glomerular filtration rate, which is a measure of kidney function. Also, serum creatinine is a measure of kidney function because who should excrete creatinine the kidney the kidney should excrete all of the creatinine in your blood all of it of course it's not gonna happen in one cycle but that's the aim that's the goal and then what then we talked about urea and the blood urea nitrogen in the previous video again the urea and the nitrogen of that urea is a waste product that the kidney should get rid of so why have a ratio then because the kidney will not get rid of all of the urea the kidney gets rid of some of the urea and reabsorbs some of that urea back to the blood in a process known as back diffusion. Why is that? Because it helps us concentrate the urine. It is this uh, unevenness and inequality of the kidney's treatment of the BUN versus the creatinine that will be exploited in this ratio for the benefit of my patient with uremia frosting. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order particularly the last few ones. Let's start by answering the quiz of the last video. Here is a patient with hepatorenal syndrome, a liver disease that caused a kidney disease. So both the liver and the kidney are toast, yet the serum blood urea nitrogen is normal. How on earth? I'll tell you how. Remember that normally we go proteins, then amino acids, then ammonia, then the urea cycle of the liver will convert ammonia into urea, then urea will go to the blood, it's going to reach the kidney, and the kidney will excrete it into the urine. If I have liver failure, what's gonna happen? My ammonia will go up and urea will go down. I got you. So liver disease alone should lower the urea in my blood, i.e. lower the BUN. But wait, I said hepatorenal syndrome. The kidney failure should increase the urea from one and two. Both forces should balance each other. And this patient might end up with, believe it or not, normal urea in the blood i.e normal blood urea nitrogen and that's how you become a good clinician not another doofus with a stethoscope recall the stages of kidney failure as my kidney function deteriorates my gfr decreases where did creatinine come from please it came from the metabolism of creatine phosphate which is in the muscle that's why creatinine in your blood depends on your muscle mass and on the ability of the kidney to excrete it in cases of renal failure of course serum creatinine will go up because the kidney is not excreting it that was the creatinine story how about the urea story we just talked about that proteins amino acids ammonia ammonia into urea urea into the kidney into the urine but the kidney will reabsorb some of it back to the blood it's called back diffusion urea is made of nitrogen and nitrogen is called azote in the language so that's why kidney failure leads to accumulation of urea in the blood i.e azotemia azote means nitrogen amia means blood azotemia will have elevated serum bun and we compared and contrasted between serum bun and serum creatinine before pause and review remember that the kidney will reabsorb some of that urea but the kidney will dump all of the creatinine so in kidney failure what's going to happen you can call it uremia you can call it azotemia these waste products are mostly acids due to metabolism so you can call it also uremic acidosis azotemia elevation of the nitrogenous waste in the blood the blood urine nitrogen goes up and of course the creatinine goes up as well so what happens in kidney failure uremia uremic acidosis azotemia you can call it renal failure gfr is decreasing urine volume is decreasing that's a poor kidney function how about bio and creatinine in my blood they are going up so whether you have acute kidney failure or chronic kidney failure you get metabolic acidosis with high anion gap because these wastes will raise the gap these wastes do not enter into the equation so we lump them together as unmeasured anions when the unmeasured anions go up you'll get a metabolic acidosis with a high 
anion gap. Conversely, renal tubular acidosis causes normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So acute kidney failure, chronic kidney failure, HAGMA, but RTA, NAGMA. Very important. If I have kidney failure, do you think the kidney is good at excreting urine? No, of course not. So my kidney will give low urine volume, i.e. oliguria. In some cases, it is zero urine, anuria. Now, what's the problem with that kidney? Who should I blame? Maybe it's not the kidney's fault. Maybe it's something coming before the kidney, i.e. the renal artery. There is less blood in the renal artery. Maybe because of atherosclerosis. Maybe because of heart failure. Maybe because of hemorrhage. Maybe it's a state of shock. Maybe septic shock. Because the definition of shock is inadequate tissue perfusion. If the kidney is not perfused, the kidney is not gonna produce. So the problem could be before the kidney. Or the problem could be inside the kidney. Acute tubular necrosis, glomerulonephritis, severe pyelonephritis, etc. Or the problem could be after the kidney, such as obstruction. Obstruction of one ureter is not going to lead to renal failure because the other kidney will compensate. But obstruction of the urethra, because you only have one urethra in the midline, can eventually lead to kidney failure if the obstruction is severe enough. So stones, benign prosthetic hyperplasia, cervical cancer, etc. So my patient is having high bio and creatinine in the serum. Who should I blame? It could be a problem from before the kidney. Poor renal artery perfusion. There is a rule in medicine that says no BP, no PP. Without adequate arterial blood pressure, there is no perfusion and there is no urine output. Examples of pre-renal azotemia. Any state of shock, congestive heart failure, which is a cardiogenic shock, hemorrhage, which is a hypovolemic shock, severe volume depletion, dehydration, etc. It doesn't have to be a shock. It could be renal artery stenosis from atherosclerosis in an old guy or fibromuscular dysplasia in a young lady. It's not the kidney's fault. The kidney is still healthy. Therefore, the kidney will reabsorb some of that blood urea nitrogen back by back diffusion, which means if you plot the ratio, the ratio will be higher than 15, which is normal. My kidney is still healthy. A good kidney is a kidney that excretes less sodium in the urine because sodium is valuable. It's the main extracellular fluid cation. So we got to preserve it, leaving less urine to be excreted in the urine. So the fractional excretion of sodium is less than 1% as long as your kidney is still okay. Moreover, a good kidney is a kidney that can concentrate the urine, producing a very concentrated urine with high osmolality or osmolarity. I don't care. Per kilogram, it's osmolality. But per liter, it's osmolarity. That was the story of pre-renal renal failure or pre-renal azotemia. Next, we have renal azotemia. What are the causes? The textbook will say ischemic or nephrotoxic. I would rather say Hypoxic or toxic? Why hypoxic? Because of any of these causes. Why toxic? Because of heavy metals, antibiotics, etc. Is this a good kidney? Heck no, it's acute tubular necrosis. The tubules are dead. Do you think this kidney can reabsorb some of that urea back? Nope. What's gonna happen? Low numerator equals low ratio. Do you think this kidney will preserve the sodium? Nope, the kidney will waste the sodium. So the fractional excretion of sodium is high. Do you think this kidney is capable of producing good concentrated urine? No, the kidney cannot. This phenomenon is sometimes called isosthenuria. Sthenos means strength. Iso means the same. The strength of the urine is the same, which means no matter how little or how much water you drink, the kidney cannot concentrate the urine. So it gives you the same osmolarity every time. That's why in chronic kidney disease, especially, what's the specific gravity? It's 10-10 and it does not change. You drink more water, you drink less water, the kidney sucks either way, and you are fixed at a certain number. That's some isosthenuria action. But what if the problem is after the kidney, like a stone? Well, if it's a mild early disease, it's a good kidney. So it behaves as if it's a pre-renal azotemia. Later, if it's the disease so severe, let's say acute obstructive pyelonephritis, that's an emergency, or severe bilateral hydronephrosis, that's not good. 
Eventually, the kidney will fail, will become toast, the tubules will die because of the back pressure. So the kidney will behave as intrarenal azotemia. So when the ratio is greater than 15, it's a good kidney. You see it here and early here. But when the BUN to creatinine ratio, and again, I'm measuring the serum BUN and the serum creatinine, is less than 15, this kidney is poor. It could be intrarenal azotemia or late post-renal azotemia. This is the utility of the BUN to creatinine ratio. It doesn't have to be 15, by the way. There is a reference range. I believe it's 15 to 19 or 15 to 20. I prefer to memorize 15. Do you want to learn more about the micturition reflex? How about the titratable acidity? How your kidney plays with ammonia and ammonium ions and ammonium chloride? And why is that important? Why do we need a counter current multiplier in the loop of Henle? Why bother? Why counter current exchanger in the capillaries? Learn about all of this by downloading my kidney physiology course at medicosisperfectionaries.com. To learn about kidney pharmacology, i.e. diuretics, download my cardiac pharmacology course. To learn about the difference between HAGMA and NAGMA, the serum anion gap versus the serum osmolar gap versus the urine anion gap versus the stool osmolar gap and much more, download my acid-base imbalance course. But hey, Medicosis, your courses are so heavy, they measure in gigabytes upon gigabytes and I do not have a space on my computer. Then you can simply click on the join button below this video, join the highest tier that contains all of my premium videos and indulge your yourself in more than 300 premium videos. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense.